Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So I am at the Rebel Capitalist Live event. I am just taking a quick break here to make a video for you guys. I'm in the lobby of the hotel, and um, I wanted to share this article with you um, simply because I haven't heard anybody talking about this particular issue that has that has presented itself here in the uh, in the Portland area. And I have a feeling that this is going to really impact the uh, the global market when it comes to pot ash. Now, potash, I, I mean, I've heard of potash, but to be honest with you, I really didn't know a whole lot about, about this particular fertilizer and how prevalent it is used inside of the agricultural you know, industry throughout the entire world. Now, there's just a handful of producers of this potash. Well, I should say there's only a handful of like top producers, right? I mean, there's only going to be a few top producers. Anyway, um, they're Russia and uh, someplace else over there, you know, as far as dealing with the war. Um, you know, they're busy, right? The other one is out of coming out of Portland, Oregon, right? Now, the pot ash itself comes from Canada, right? And they have this, like, huge rail line that they carry this pot ash to the Willamette area in, in near Portland in order to put it on the, on the ships and send it out to, to the rest of the world. And now, this particular facility that loads these ships, it has this huge conveyor Right, this big long conveyor belt and now you know you see these things kind of like all over you know the river you know uh, in this particular area I mean they have like grain elevators all over the place like there's more grain exported out of like the Columbia River than I think anywhere else in the entire United States so it, you know this is a, a pretty common place for filling ships well this particular conveyor is just for this potash and it collapsed like completely collapsed right and they don't know when they're gonna get it back up and running again now, it leads me to believe, like, okay, so I think about the production gap, right? So here's a major distributor of potash. In conjunction with the war that is taking place in Russia, Ukraine, holding back the distribution of potash from this particular area, that doesn't leave a whole lot of potash to distribute throughout the rest of the world. Now, there is other manufacturers of this, but, you know, when you think about the major supplies that are not available now, how long does this take before it starts to impact the agricultural industry? Now, you know, I've said it many times on this channel that we should be concerned about food shortages coming into the future, and people roll their eyes and shake their head every time I say this, and I don't know why. Like, why would you roll your eyes at this? This is probably the most critical thing in the entire world. You think about it, without this, people will die. There will be famines because of it. And this isn't something to take lightly. I mean, you should take this into very, you know, very close consideration as far as the impact that it's going to have on the on the future, right? Now, I think about it, it's like there is pot ash in the system that is being delivered right now, right? And that's going to make it to the farms to, you know, start planting with. But the gap in production that has taken place either from the war effort or this collapsed conveyor and then not being able to, like, say, ramp up production in the other facilities that produce pot ash, like, how is it that this pot ash is going to make it to the globe you know, to for the fertilizer to grow food. It's like, it's not, right? There is no way that it's gonna happen. Not, you know, until this conveyor is put back up or the wars come to an end or something like that. Like, that's the, the way that the distribution of potash is gonna come back in. And it's a critical component to the agricultural industry. I mean, put these pieces together, what do you, what's gonna happen? Right? Is that there's gonna be a food shortage due to the lack of available potash out there to even to grow the food. Like, it's one thing to say, hey, man, this has gotten real expensive, but it's available. It's it's another thing to say that it's just not even available to get. And that's going to be, like, that's going to be the critical pinch point when it comes to this food production. Now, here in the United States, we actually have producers of potash. Like, we can, I don't know if we have produce enough to for our own consumption, but we, you know, we have states within the United States that produces potash. So we're not reliant on like global supply of pot, pot ash, although I'm sure we do buy from the globe in order to you know, facilitate our agricultural industry. We have at least some supply here, so we could you know, at least you know, use our own supply of pot ash to at least keep some of the agricultural going, if not you know, a lot of it, if we can get pot ash from someplace else in order to keep it going. But you know that there's going to be places around the world who are not going to get it who are going to suffer with the fact that they are not going to be able to produce the food. And when that happens, what you're going to find is that most food around the internet, like most commodities, like almost everything out there, is all priced in dollars. 
right? And if the United States is a producer of food and other nations out there are going into famine, they're going to pay any price they can because that's right, it's food. They're going to starve without it. So they will pay any price that they need to in order to acquire that food. And it's going to be coming from possibly the United States or at least, you know, that would be a, a food producer, somebody who actually produces more than they consume. The United States happens to be one of them. And we have a supply of potash. So that leads me to believe that there's going to be a food shortage that causes food prices to go way up. And it's not the food shortage here in the United States that causes the price to go up. It's the food shortage outside of the United States that causes the prices to go up. And you can see it, you know, kind of happening out there at, at this time, you know. You think about all the pork production, chicken production, uh, all the, the meat production that had taken place over the last few months has now left an oversupply of pork coming into the industry, or an oversupply of pork yet now in the industry. Pork producers are now shutting down operations. Well, give us some time, right? And they will find the price of pork going back up and they will go back into production again. But think about it, like how big is that gap in production gonna take from the time that they're like, man, we've overproduced to the time that the demand is now high enough that it constitute them to go back into investment into, into the pork industry. You know, these are the things that I think about when it comes to, you know, when I read articles like this coming out of, out of the Willamette area. And so, I, again, like, as I, as I found this article and I heard about this conveyor collapse, because it's not too far from where I live, you know, I'm a couple hours away. Now, I heard about it, but I didn't know how big of a deal it was at the time. And as I found this article that I leave, I'm going to leave it down in the description for you guys, I went and looked, and there's not a whole lot of other people talking about this. And this is like a big deal. So even here at the Rebel Capitalist Live event, you know, we're just kind of discussing different things. And I said, hey, have you heard about this potash, you know, this conveyor belt falling? Nobody, like I have not yet heard a single person or a, I haven't talked with a single person who is aware of this situation right now. And so like, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know like at the time when I was bringing it up that it was not well known yet. So I don't know. I mean, is this like something that they're trying to keep a, a lid on? Or are they trying to keep the potash like, from just like exploding in price as people you know are going to be concerned about whether or not they can secure their pot ash for the future agricultural purposes i mean who knows what to you know what's going to come from all this if the news actually gets out there you know to the point that it was just like man there's going to be a shortage of this particular you know fertilizer coming into the future um you know at this point i haven't seen it yet now how do you invest to make money in this? I mean, I guess you could, you know, invest in companies that are actually still producing this potash and getting it out to their to the market. You know, um, is it a play that you can get into agricultural, you know, farmlands and stuff? Because you know that if the prices are going to go up, you know, due to the shortage of food around the world, that you know the American farms might be doing pretty well. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to imagine like what all the cause and effects from this will be. But I know you guys will let us know what the cause and effects are down in the description. So I really appreciate appreciate you like giving me what you think this is going to be like the cause and effects from this conveyor collapse. Considering that not a lot of people are talking about it and there's not a lot of supply of this, you know this is going to send a ripple around the world. Okay, just wanted to give you guys a video. I'm going to go back down and watch Robert Kiyosaki speak. Right. Uneducated economist, you let me know.